You saw the U.S. has redeployed its newest aircraft carrier from the Persian Gulf to the Syrian coast. Washington's also urging American citizens to leave Syria immediately. Let's talk to Patrick Henningsen now. He's a political analyst from America's Infowar.com online magazine. Patrick, very good evening. Thanks for being with us. Um, does this look, from what you're seeing, from what you're uh, gleaning here, like a build-up towards an intervention, do you think? I think uh, what it looks like now is we're looking at the initial steps of a repeat of what we saw in Libya. Okay, the U.S. have positioned their aircraft carrier off the coast of Syria, but most of that is posturing. The U.S. cannot go in unilaterally in a military fashion, and because the other coalition of countries, or what I call the Axis power countries, which are the U.S., Britain, France, and Israel, are acting in consort and supplying the rebels in Syria who aren't all from Syria. Okay, the Free Syrian Army is just over the Syrian border in Turkey. Recent reports from The Telegraph and other major newspapers have cited this force at 15,000 strong. Okay, this is in direct violation of international law. The Western powers cannot back a, a rebel military force working against the government in Syria, which is a legitimate government. Well, we'll come to the legality of that in just a sec, but, I mean, we're talking about um, the U.S., France, Britain. They've all just completed a very costly military mission in Libya. They're struggling to solve some big financial problems at home, of course. Do you think they really can get involved in another intervention? Look, uh, the U.S. is financing all of its empire uh, through the Federal Reserve <coughs> printing fiat dollars, okay? And there's only one candidate in this sort of presidential race at the moment on the Republican side is Ron Paul, who's actually advocating not getting involved in nation building, not having military in intervention overseas. No one else is talking about it. But it's good news for the oil producers. This uh, air of instability, Iran, Syria, and so forth, is going to mean that if there is any kind of uh, military war or anything like that, it's going to raise oil prices immediately. So this is a cash cow for the major uh, OPEC countries like Saudi Arabia and also com companies like Exxon and Philips and uh, SoCal and people like that. But if this does all kick off, let's talk about the legality of it. As you um, touched on just now, Russia and China say they're vehemently opposed to meddling in Syrian affairs. They're vowing to block any resolution at the UN. Uh, could Western countries nonetheless still undertake military efforts of some sort, though, despite that? Well, uh, funny enough, uh, Russia has just supplied, reports are that Russia has just supplied Syria with the S-300 anti-aircraft missile batteries. This is the most advanced radar system and anti-aircraft system. So uh, if, the, if, if the Western powers think that they're going to get away with a no-fly zone in Syria, this is a very different prospect than Libya. Um, this will be the first time in Syria, and also if you look forward with Iran, that the West actually is engaging a country that has the ability to fight back. So, but the strategy now is to weaken Syria internally by using mercenary forces, al-Qaeda forces, which were used in Libya and also in Afghanistan, to bring them into base in Turkey, come over the border for incursions. These humanitarian zones that the French are talking about are not humanitarian corridors. These are paramilitary corridors. They will be used to move arms, much like the Egyptian uh, military government facilitated the movement of arms over the Egyptian border into Libya, which was a direct contravention of the UN resolution 1973. So the UN is losing all credibility here as well. Patrick, just, just cut to the chase here. Uh, again, as time goes on, as we're focusing on what's happening in the country, why do you think Western powers are still so sure that President Assad's departure is going to improve anything in Syria, especially uh, witnessing what we're seeing in Egypt right now, tonight? Exactly. Look, the, the Arab League called an emergency meeting in Cairo to discuss Syria. Meanwhile, uh, real reformers, genuine Egyptian citizens, are getting their heads cracked open by the military police in Egypt, which is U.S.-backed. So the Arab Spring is a joke for the people of Egypt. And if you want any indication as to what Syria might look like after the West is done with their proxy wars using their proxy rebels and maybe a bombing campaign, look at Libya. They're flying the al-Qaeda flag over the government buildings in Benghazi, okay? But it is open for business as far as international corporations go. The agenda is to carve up what's left of these countries into privatized industrial corridors. They're carving up Libya. They want to carve up Syria. They also want to break 
uh, what Russia and the former Soviet Union states are forming an economic bloc, a Eurasian Union. Most likely, Syria and Iran will be a crucial part of that economic bloc. This is also throwing a spanner into the plans of, that are coming out of Moscow. So this is a much wider, I think we're going to see the, uh, the, a, a Cold War, a new Cold War emerge in the next two years. And we are seeing the initial steps of that new Cold War right now. Patrick Henningsen, political analyst from America's Infowar.com online magazine. Thanks for your thoughts. Thank you.